you guys, Mary from SVG Cuts here and fall is underway which is pretty exciting here in the Midwest. I can't wait to go pick some pumpkins and enjoy the cooler weather. So I was thinking about some cool stuff to make for fall and the first thing I thought of was an acorn. We could totally use a really cute acorn. So I had a lot of fun embellishing the top of it and using my cute fall paper and tying some cute folly looking fibers and yarns up there. So that's totally cool. You can put some goodies in it and whoever you give it to is going to be totally impressed and totally love it. So this gift bag is super useful. I actually have a lot of September birthdays in my family so I was looking for a big gift bag. So we have a lot already. We have a lot of um, big boxes and nice big bags, but we didn't have one quite like this that uses the whole width of the mat. So this piece here in the front is as big as it can possibly be on your 12 by 12 cutting mat. So it's the biggest bag that you can possibly make with your 12 by 12 cutting mat. So I just poked some holes, or uh, there's holes already when you cut it out, and then I used eyelets in there to attach the nice little handle. And you get this cute little squirrel here, which is just a fun bonus. You can use him on anything else. Or obviously, you can just make the bag plain and use cute paper. And it's going to be super useful for all of your gifts. So we also have our cute little box here with a cornfield around the top and our cute little owl, which you can also use on anything else, which is fun. And I just have it filled up with some little candies and shredded paper and some candy corn in there. So that's totally cute. We also have a new waterfall card, which uses this little tab here to pull down. And it's pretty impressive. It looks really like complicated. If you give it to someone, they'll be like, whoa, seriously? But as you'll see here in just a minute, it is super easy to put together. And finally, we have our cute little Autumn Memories mini album. And once again, we are using some 4x6 photos and you can use your machine to cut it perfectly out exactly framed where you want it to be on your picture. So I used some really cute paper here and these are just plain 4x6's so those are super simple to just just paste into your album and if you're using a nice fun collection of fall paper like I did here it's all going to coordinate and look really cute together so that is going to be a really cool gift or a really cool keepsake. So like I was saying, you can use these photo templates to cut your pictures out. This one goes on the cover and this one goes on the inside. And you can take your picture and line it up exactly where you want it to be and then use your cutting mat and your cutting machine to cut it out perfectly where you want it. So that is really cool and it's going to be super special. So the paper that I used is by Simple Stories. And I only have one piece of it left here because I used it all up. And I got it on twopeasinabucket.com. And I also got this little 6x6 pad and I used some of those little small papers. So that's some really cute fall paper. And I'm sure there's plenty of other fall papers that you have out there. Maybe you still have some from last year or whatever. So I've got all my pieces cut out to show you how the bag and this box and the acorn and the card goes together. They're pretty easy, so let's get started. So let's start with the bottom of our acorn here. And we've got six pieces that look like this. And we've got, oops, that's for the top actually. And then we've also got six pieces that look like this. They're panels. So the first thing we're going to do is put glue on all of these tabs. Just a nice thin little even layer of glue going as close to the fold as you can without getting too much on there because you don't want it coming out too much if possible. And you're just going to line up the edge of the paper with the fold and just go one at a time working your way down and just keep going until you get to the bottom. And my glue is getting a little bit messy, but that's okay. So we're just going to do that to all six pieces until we have the bottom formed. So go ahead and do that. So I've got all six of my panels almost done here. Now I just need to close it up. So there's no secret, there's no trick. I'm just doing the same thing here on all of these tabs once again. 
And I'm just gonna go one at a time and close it on up. Not too tricky at all. It's a lot easier than you would probably think when you see the finished product, it's so impressive. But when you do it step by step, it's pretty simple. Okay, so it's all closed up. Now all we're gonna do is take these six tabs and they are gonna get glued on just like this. So all we need to do is put glue on the very bottom and then just a line on the top. I don't need to put glue on the whole thing because I want it to have a nice curve to it. I'm gonna let that take hold a little bit on the bottom. And it's not going all the way to the bottom. There's a little bit of a border around it of brown there. And then I'm just gonna put it up here on the top and hold it while it dries. And then go ahead and do that with the other six panels and you'll have your finished bottom. So next we have the top of our acorn here and we have six pieces again like this and then six panels which I have embossed ahead of time to make it look more acorny. This part goes on the very top and then we also have this little stem pieces here. So set these guys aside and we will start by taking one of our six lid pieces here and just like I did before I'm going to put glue on all of these tabs and then I'm going to just put it in place like I did before one at a time and this one has like more of a curve to it so I really want it to take hold in place before I move on to the next one just so it doesn't pull out of place when I curve it. And then for these bottom two I can kind of just do them at the same time and just fold it over and hold it while it dries. And it's not even scientifically perfect the way that I glued it here but it's good enough. So go ahead and do that to the other six panels until you have your top done. So I'm almost done here. Once again, I just need to close it up. I've got all six of my panels glued together except for the final seam here. So again, no trick or secret, just one at a time, one tab at a time and hold them in place for a little bit while they dry. And we are almost done here with our top. And I can put those two on at the same time, like I said before. Okay, so now we are going to glue this guy in place by just putting some glue on all six of these top tabs. And then I'm gonna set it down here and push it down and into place. And I got a little messy with my glue so you can be a little more careful with yours and make yours more perfect. Okay so there's our top and once again we've got these panels which I didn't ink around the edges. If I had a brown ink pad right here I would just rub it on the edge first like I did here. Gives it a nice effect. And again we're just going to put glue down here and just up here and hold it flush with that this seam here and then hold it here and let it dry and then go ahead and do that to the rest of them. So next we've got our two little stem pieces and they are folded here and here. So what I'm going to do is put glue above the fold on one of them and put the other one on top of it. And now we've got our little piece here with the slit in it. And this is just gonna go right through the slit. And I'm gonna put a dot of glue on either side of it. And just spread it apart 
and give it a second to dry. And then you can go ahead and glue that right on top of your acorn. So next for our large gift bag, we have the face of the bag here, which looks a lot like the back of the bag, but the only difference is the back of it has an extra fold right here so that you can fold it up flat when you're all done. If you're, when you're done using the bag, you can store it flat. So we have the two sides here, and they might look symmetrical, but they are actually a little bit different. They have, there's a score line right here, but there's not one over here. So there's one here. This side is gonna go towards the back. And on this one, it's over here, I can feel it, and that's gonna go towards the back. So this side is the front, and this side is the front. So this polka dotted paper here is our front. So we're gonna glue that on the front. So let's start by putting a line of glue on this tab on the side here. And I'm going to put it in place and just line it up here with the edge along the fold. And I can go ahead and do the same thing with the other side. And if you happen to glue the sides not the way that I said, it's not the end of the world. Your bag will still look nice and be functional. It just will not fold flat for storage so that you can use it again. So don't stress out too much about it, but just do it the way that I said and you will be a happy camper. Okay, so the front is glued onto the two sides. Now we just wanna glue the back on. So I'm just gonna do the same thing and glue the, the back here. And I can tell it's the back because it's got this extra fold. I'm gonna glue that right down with the edge of the paper right along the crease. And then just finish it off by doing the same thing on the other side here. So just a nice thin little line of glue. And you can be more precise with yours. Then I'm being, and just glue that in place like we did before. So before you get started with your bag or at this point, you can enforce these holes with some eyelets if you want to. And if you look in your PDF, it says exactly what size they are. I'm, I'm forgetting, I don't wanna say the wrong thing. So next we want to take these tabs here that are on the top. They are larger than the ones on the bottom, so you can't be confused. The bottom has four tabs on it, but the top has these two larger ones. So just go ahead and on the inside put a line of glue and just fold it in and then do the same thing on the back. So finally all there is left to do is put your bottom on, which is super simple. Just put a nice even layer of glue around all four of these tabs and just place your bottom onto the glue and just line it up real nice, give it a chance to dry. And then if you wanna reinforce the bottom to make your bag extra strong, you can manually cut a piece of chipboard to a little bit smaller than this rectangle here. And if you wanna look in your PDF, it'll say exactly what size to cut that to. Or you can just use this as a template to kinda of eyeball it. So next for our cute little cornfield owl box, we've got two pieces like this, two pieces like this, and then two rectangles. One of them is a little bit smaller than the other, so the smaller one we can set aside. The larger one is the bottom of your box. So this is super easy. We're just gonna put some glue on one of the side tabs. And obviously we wanna glue a, a long one to a short one. So just work your way around the sides of the box until you have it 
I'm ready to close up here. So I've almost got my box completed here and just finishing up the final side. And then we just want to put our bottom on. So just put glue on all four of these tabs and put this in place. The only tricky part is that since the top is so intricate, you can't really set it down. So you kind of just have to work with it in the air and then flip it over, push down those tabs, and then you can glue this smaller rectangle inside to finish it off. Then you can just go ahead and add your cute little panels and your strip and your, if you want to put your owl on there, you can too. So next let's take a look at our waterfall card. And we've got our card base here and we've got these two pieces. We've got this little this little guy here that goes on on your little pulley. And then we've got these three pieces here which are going to be our our falling flapping leaves. So first we want to take this and as you can see it's scored three times here. So I'm going to fold it in half basically and then there's two more folds down here. And I'm going to put it on top of this piece. And as you can see, there's two holes here and there's two holes here. So what we want to do is put our brad through there. And I'm using small brads, but you could also use bigger ones. And I'll put the other one through the other side. And then this whole thing is going to get glued down to our card base. And I'm going to put it in the center, but I'm going to put it flush with the top. So the top of it is even with the top of our card here. So we'll just glue that down and we can glue our little, our little handle piece right here. And then here's the easy part. I'm just going to put glue on just one of these rectangles and I'm going to take my top piece and I'm going to just glue that right on there. And the top of it is just lined up with the fold underneath it. I guess it would have been easier if I did it in the reverse order here, but that's okay. So next I'm going to take my glue and put it on this next rectangle here and glue the next guy down. And then I can glue this final one down. It's shaped a little bit differently, but it's the same it's the same idea. Now I can glue the whole thing completely down. I'm just double checking that I'm doing that the right way there. So I can glue the whole entire thing down to this piece here. And now you can go ahead and put a leaf here and a leaf here and a leaf here. And then it looks super cool when you do that. And you can add a little ribbon here, just tie it in a knot. So there you have it, super fun fall projects. And I hope you have a lot of fun making them. If you do, I would love to see pictures on our Facebook wall or in our forum or on your blog. You can share a link on our Facebook wall. So thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time and happy crafting. Learn more by visiting www.svgcuts.com. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and watch all of our crafty videos on YouTube. It's a world of crafty content with you in the middle. SVGcuts.com, inspiring you to live creatively and beautifully.